Hi, I'm Dave with Kids in Character. Thanks for joining us again for another fire safety tips video. I've talked to a couple of people who have been in fires in their lives after this experience. It's amazing how many people you meet who have been through a tragedy like this. And a couple of stories stuck with me and I want to make sure I pass them on. In one case, a very nice lady was telling us about being in a fire when she was a child and she lost family members in that fire. But she told me that when she was in the fire, she made the decision as a child to hide because she was scared. So she crawled under the bed and hid. Now, as parents, I want you to remind your kids that they should never hide. They should either try and get out of the house or in some way indicate where they are because the firemen will search for them and will find them. But if they're hiding, it wastes time and it makes it that much harder. And to explain this a little bit further, recently uh, my wife and I had the chance to go through our house with a captain from the Poudre Valley Fire Department. Patrick Love is the Public Affairs and Information Safety Officer for Poudre Valley Fire Department. And he explained a little bit about how firemen do their searches. I mean, it was a beautiful home always, but it was particularly beautiful because we were keeping it as perfect as we could to show it. And we you know, cleaned it all up and painted and everything was gorgeous. It's definitely not gorgeous anymore. Although it will be again someday. Um, the amazing thing with this fire was not the fire itself, but the heat and the smoke. And there's evidence of that everywhere, which is hard to, to see on the video. These walls were white. Um, they're now black. <laughs> and this was a beautiful bedroom. This is our master bedroom. And as you can see, the this damage here is the smoke. It's not the fire. And it's destroyed. Do you know where these marks come from? No, In I the don't. Smoke? Uh, That's our firefighters doing a search for anyone in here because they're on the floor and they're crawling. Are you kidding? Oh my god! And so what they what what we do when we're when we're uh, in a smoked out atmosphere like this, we are on our hands and knees and we're feeling along the wall as we go in and out of every little nook and cranny. And it's the same thing over here. You can see you can see handprints. And they're searching in the tub for, for anybody that's in here. Oh my gosh. And that's what we have to do. We have to do it all, all by feel. So you would have seen nothing? No. Here? No. I mean, this is so thick, I can't imagine. Oh. This is what is left of the smoke alarm at the top of the second level, right at the top of the stairs. All smoke alarms in this residence were operational. And as a matter of fact, Dave changed out the batteries and one of those batteries possibly caused the fire. So the difference between these two bedrooms at the front of the house and the master bedroom is that in the master bedroom, you noticed the smoke staining on everything. It was a thick, putrid, black, toxic type of film. And that's what covered the entire space of the master bedroom at one time during this fire. And if you compare them to these two bedrooms where we are now, these two bedrooms had the doors closed. These two bedrooms, it was survivable. If someone had gotten trapped above this fire, they would still be alive today because the doors were closed. That would not be true if they were in the master bedroom. The door to the master bedroom was still open.
As you can see from what uh, Patrick told us, the firemen are searching the house on their hands and knees, feeling every nook and cranny. So that's why it's so important for your kids to know not to hide under the bed or in a place where they can't be found. Again, teach them to put towels under the door to keep smoke from coming in, but indicate where they are. That's so critically important. Now, as parents, if you're wondering why you should care about fire safety and if it's important or not, um, I want you to listen to these final words from my wife, Janet. And this is her rendition of what happened in our fire. Uh, she was interviewed just a couple of days after the fire. And she can tell you from her experience what it was like to go through this, what really matters, and why you should care about fire safety. I was at work on Thursday morning, the morning of the fire, and I was in a meeting. Um, one of the gals from our office came in and said, Janet, there's an emergency at home. You need to call home right away. So I picked up the phone and called my husband's cell phone. And he answered the phone and said, Honey, you're not going to believe this, but our house is on fire. Um, I said, oh my gosh, are you okay? And he said, yes, I'm okay. I'm in an ambulance, um, but I need you to get home right away. So I got in the car and drove the speed limit all the way home, thinking, whatever I do, don't get in a car accident. Um, I pulled into the street um, that goes up to our house in our neighborhood and it winds around quite a ways from our house and cars were lined up on either side of the street. So I parked my car at the end of the street and I went to get out of the car and started running down the street to find my husband thinking all you have to do is find the ambulance, just find the ambulance. Um, I ran down the street and as I went around the corner, I looked up and there were fire trucks everywhere. There were police cars everywhere. There were people standing in the street. Um, and I looked up and there were three ambulances, not one ambulance. All I knew was I had to find my husband. And I panicked because there were three ambulances, not one. So I started yelling, where's my husband, where's Dave, where's Dave? I was so thankful that one of our sergeants um, was in the street along with one of our police captains who I know from the city and they grabbed me and said, I know where Dave is, I'll take you to him. So I opened the ambulance door and he was sitting in the ambulance giving oxygen to our cat. And I will never forget the feeling of joy that I had seeing him, not just seeing him, but seeing him sitting up in the ambulance was a gift straight out of heaven. And I was just so thankful that he was there and that he was alive and that he was holding a cat <laughs> and giving the cat oxygen. Um, from there, a lot of things are a blur. It was a series of events that seemed to happen. Um, I know my body was there. I don't think the rest of me was there. Um, a phenomenal, amazing effort from so many heroes in my life. There are angels walking among us here on earth who care enough to take care of somebody else's home, to protect our neighbor's homes, um, to try to save our property. These are people who don't even know us. Um, we had folks who provided us with an entire ambulance that we could use throughout the day as things were happening and we were trying to call the insurance company and deal with um, just the craziness of an emergency. Um, one of the big concerns we had was trying to get my husband to go to the hospital. <laughs> he had inhaled um, quite a bit of smoke and. The firefighters and emergency medical personnel were saying he really should go get checked out. So they finally convinced him to go and there was a period of time where he was at the hospital and I was here by myself until my older daughter got home. And uh, these people were amazing. They held me through everything and walked me through what I needed to do. And um, there was one point when my daughter um, was with me. She had joined me from school and we were sitting in the ambulance together and it occurred to me that 
I was experiencing this loss and it was a very irrational kind of thought process, but <laughs> um, I lost my father to cancer about three years ago and I had a jewelry box in my bedroom and the jewelry box doesn't have expensive jewelry in it, but it has some things that are trinkets from my dad um, and from my childhood that he um, left for me and I, were passed on to me after he died. One of the things in that jewelry bo box is a, a fishing book that my children had given him for Father's Day when they were little kids. <laughs> and I remember a firefighter coming into the ambulance and he said, um, the bedroom is, is gone. And I thought, oh no, the jewelry box and the memories that I have of my dad are gone. And when they said gone, they meant gone from a smoke standpoint, not gone from a fire standpoint. I don't know how it happened, but the next thing I knew, I looked up and my jewelry box was being carried out of this house and it was intact and it was fine. And the fishing, the fishing book is inside the jewelry box and I still have that. Um, fire takes away things that are valuable to you and those things are things. Um, what I've learned through this experience though is that nothing can replace family members. Nothing can replace the people that you love. And there's real terror in coming so close to facing death of someone who is your life partner. So if we can leave you with anything, it's that if there's anything you can do to not have a fire in your home, it's worth the time and the energy and the effort to do those things so you can protect your loved ones and you cannot have this happen to you.